This is maybe an unpopular opinion, but I actually kind of like the roomies house in Oasis Springs, which is rare for me because usually I just make videos complaining about EA builds. I'm talking about this one where Zoe Patel and her roommates live. To be clear, I said I kind of like the roomies house. I feel like um, the outside is a little bit strange, but I like the concept. I like the courtyard in the middle. It's actually kind of cool how it's a house for four roommates and they have this like weird donut shape going on. It's different and I like that it's different and I also sort of like this mid-century style and I was thinking that today we could try to renovate the roomies house and see if we can update it to maybe be a little bit better executed. I'm trying to word this very carefully as to not be too mean because I, I do like this house. It's not the worst thing in The Sims 4 and I mean that as a very serious compliment. I'll give you a quick tour. There isn't that much to see. We've kind of got a little living room. We've got a small dining area. There's a cool kitchen with a fancy bar. It's a four bedroom, three bathroom house and we've got a bedroom for each of the roommates and I think the biggest problem I have with the interior is that there's not enough personality here. Like it's not immediately clear to me which room is supposed to belong to which roommate. It's also kind of dark. It's colorful I guess because it's got some fun furniture but I, I just feel like this could be better. The description says this household seems to have stepped right out of a TV sitcom. What wacky misadventures will the perky Zoe, easygoing Mitchell, uptight ladies man Jay, and intellectual Gavin suffer this week? Tune in and find out. And this household was actually inspired by New Girl the TV show, which I have never seen, but I take people's word for. And the Sims in it are Zoe Patel, Mitchell Kalani, Jay Huntington the third, and also Kevin Richards. So I'm gonna try to renovate this to be more appropriate for them. So the goal here is to give the house some more personality, fix the exterior, make it more fun, and also just hopefully in general make it less ugly. Before we get into the speed build, I want to tell you a little bit about our sponsor today, ThreadUp. ThreadUp is an online thrift store that I have been a massive fan of for ages. I'm not kidding when I say I literally only buy new clothes from ThreadUp nowadays. I actually just bought a couple new things, including this dress. It's originally from Madewell and I only paid $23 for it on ThreadUp. And that's kind of the beauty of buying things secondhand because you can get a massive discount. And not only is it more affordable, but it's also way better for the environment to buy used clothing. I really do try to be sustainable and ThreadUp makes it so easy because you can do it online from the comfort of your own home. They also just released a new feature where you can share your favorites on the website. So if you want, you can scroll through my list of favorites and kind of shop them. So aside from this dress, I did buy a couple new things this week. I got this kind of fun sweater that I thought would be kind of cute for YouTube videos. Nobody is surprised, but I actually got another sweater and this one has some kind of cute detail on the sleeves, like little polka dots. I'm sensing a theme here. Everything I bought is either striped or polka dots. This little cardigan was only $12.99. Not quite stripes, but like close enough. And it's a really cute color. This is the first piece of orange clothing I've ever bought, but I thought it was kind of cute. It's just a little t-shirt. And in perhaps my greatest thread up purchase yet, I got some new jeans. These are Madewell jeans. So I am very pleased to be buying these secondhand and paying half price. I have found so many of my favorite clothing items on ThreadUp and they're offering you all an extra massive discount. If you use my link down below and code Kayla, you can get an additional 40% off your first purchase. If you liked anything I showed off today, when you click my link, you can see all my favorites and you can really easily shop similar items, but you can also just shop stuff that you want because they've got a ton of options. So thank you. Thank you again to ThreadUp for sponsoring today's video. I feel kind of like a fashion guru right now. So thank you again to ThreadUp for sponsoring sponsoring today's video. All right, let's just dive right into this because we have a lot of work to do. Obviously starting with the exterior because there's just something weird going on with the shape of this house. I love the donut vibes, but it it just looks kind of strange. It's like weirdly asymmetrical, but in a bad way. I feel like if you're gonna do an asymmetrical house like this, it has to be more obviously asymmetrical. You can't just have it be one tile off because then it just looks off. If you're gonna do that, you have to make it like very obviously intentionally asymmetrical. So that's what I did here. I kind of added a little bit of space to the house and I made it a bit bigger in the front on one side so that it seemed a little bit more, I don't know, it just looks better. It's less weird looking from the front. It's got a proper entrance. I was able to adjust some of the spacing so we can get more windows. And this way we're also going to have more room to make the bedrooms bigger because I do like this house, but the bedrooms are kind of strangely sized. Like one of them is really tiny, which is okay. I mean, the Sim probably deserves it. <laughs> I don't really like the men in this house very much, but it, you know, it'd be nice to have a little bit more room. So I managed to get a bit more space in those bedrooms. I was also able to add a lot of things to this house that we didn't have when the game first came out. Something I've noticed in almost all of the base game houses, especially the ones in Oasis Springs, is that it almost seems like they built the house 
preparing for a pool. There's like a huge patio space that's exactly appropriately sized to have a pool. And I don't just mean the townie houses, even some of the empty houses have that. In Willow Creek, the Spencer Kim Lewis house has that. There's like a perfect space for a pool in the back patio. And I don't know how many of you were around when The Sims 4 first came out, but believe it or not, we did not have pools in the base game at the time. We didn't get pools added until much later in a base game update, which I guess in the grand scheme of things wasn't that much later. Like the pools have been out for a long time now, but on release day, The Sims 4 base game did not have pools. It actually did not have a lot of things. <laughs> it did not have toddlers. It did not have ghosts. The list could go on and on and on, but pools were kind of a big one that the game was lacking when it first released, which I think a lot of people kind of have forgotten about. I remember because I remember vividly when the game first released and like they were teasing it and stuff, being so mad that it wasn't gonna have those things. I was like, I'm never gonna play that. <laughs> I'm only gonna play Sims 3. And I was so mad about it. And then look at me now, I'm a Sims 4 YouTuber. But the game has improved a lot over the years. It's it's really different now than it was when it first came out. It was severely lacking at the time. But anyway, the point here is that I feel like this house was built with the intention of adding a pool when it came out. Like I think they sort of wanted to have a pool, but just couldn't because they didn't exist. So I made sure to add one for them. I, I thought they deserved to have one. I tried to add a lot of like party things for them because they had that big giant bar inside originally. So I got like a cool outdoor kitchen with a bar. I got the pool. There's a lot of seating outside, you know, stuff like that. I tried to add in. And I also went for a kind of funky color scheme with this. You'll see there's a lot of like fun colors going on. It's very teal and orange. I was kind of channeling that mid-century vibe that we talked about. And so I, I added a lot of things in colors that I don't normally use, but I feel like it turned out kind of cute. It's always fun to do stuff like this and try to use swatches that you never use. Like for example, the bowling pack. I never use the bowling pack for like anything ever, but I use the bowling pack a lot in this build for the rugs. I use the bowling packs flooring in here a couple times in the kitchen and bathroom. So it was kind of exciting to get a chance to find places to use those things. If not now, when? Like when else are you gonna use the bowling pack? So anyway, all that to say, there's also a lot of packs in this build. I'm warning you right now, I used like the bowling pack everywhere. I used a lot of the newer packs everywhere. There's a lot of Get Famous also, cause it has that mid-century vibe to it as well. I've got two other little disclaimers that I should probably mention. Number one, there's actually less bathrooms in the renovated version of this house than there was originally. That's probably a little bit illogical of me, but the thing is, I, I just, I couldn't fit them. <laughs> so there's one big, big shared bathroom and then one smaller bathroom. And they're kind of like less ideally placed. Like the original house had some Jack and Jill bathrooms between the two bedrooms and like more ensuite stuff going on. This one has one big bathroom by the kitchen and then one smaller one in the hallway. So the Sims kind of have to walk all the way around the house to get to the bathrooms, but that's okay. Really, who plays with these Sims anyway? Come on, let's be honest for a second. I know because I built this on stream and literally all day, the whole stream people were coming in like, what even is this? What house? is this? What, are you sure it's a base game house? Like, what are you doing? What, what house is this? Yeah, it's a base game house. And then I would say, oh, it belongs to like Zoe Patel, Jay Huntington. And they'd be like, who? Who's that? <laughs> I've never seen that person before. So maybe it's not as, maybe it's not as popular as I thought. I don't know. When the game first came out, I would always date Zoe Patel and Jay Huntington. They were like my number one and number two picks <laughs> for my Sims to date back in the day. I guess I would date Don Lothario a lot too. I would have my Sim like almost always have a bad boyfriend before they met a good person to date instead. So I would always date Jay Huntington and then dump him. <laughs> So I, um, I don't know, maybe I'm more familiar with this house than the average Simmer is these days. And I guess there's a lot more packs out now with more worlds. So maybe people know those townies better. And weirdly, there are two roommate houses in the base game. Both Willow Creek and Oasis Springs have some roomie houses. This one is called The Roomies and the other one in Willow Creek is called The BFFs. And that one's got like Summer Holiday, Liberty Lee, Travis Scott, you know, those people. <laughs> so in total, there's seven random single roommate Sims in both the base game worlds. So I guess that kind of makes it a little bit confusing. I actually, speaking of these Sims, have a newfound deep hatred for Mitchell Kalani. Not for any reason. He he didn't really do anything wrong for the most part, aside from the fact that he came into the house after I finished building it and he said, ooh, I'm uncomfortable because the decor is ugly. You know when they get that poorly decorated moodlet? Yeah, after I finished the build, Mitchell said it was poorly decorated. So I was really offended by that. <laughs> after I spent all this time making this build, you think it's bad? So yeah, he's my new enemy. I, um, I gave him the worst room. I guess he did say that when the house wasn't exactly completely finished, but it was all finished except the bedrooms. So he had no business saying it was bad. That was me. Oh, and I almost forgot 
God. <laughs> the other disclaimer about the house is that I have no idea how much it costs. This was not built for budget, okay? I, I didn't do any budget challenge on this house. I kind of just put whatever, wherever. But like I was saying earlier, who actually plays with these Sims? And they already have the house, so they don't need to worry about buying anything or paying for anything. And Jay Huntington has a the third in his last name, so he's probably rich. He seems very snobby and, and rich. He probably has rich parents, so they can help pay the rent. It's fine. Maybe he's got a trust fund or something. I don't know. He'll he'll cover it. <laughs> don't worry about the added expense. Okay, well, I'm actually decorating the house now. I'm working on the kitchen at the moment, and the kitchen was sort of the inspiration for the whole house. I was really proud of the color scheme that I made in the kitchen. I was talking about that bowling floor that I used. There's this kind of cute patterned linoleum in the bowling pack, so I, I used that here, and then I paired it with this blue tile from Growing Together, and I thought it looked really nice together, so I, I used that as the main inspo, and then I tried to match that color scheme in all the other rooms. A lot easier to achieve in the dining room than in the living room. The living room was a little bit big, so it made it kind of hard for me to do, but I tried this sunken living room thing, which I don't do very often anymore. Back when Snowy Escape first came out, that's when we got the update with platforms. And platforms are really cool. I love the concept of platforms. It's very fun to have like raised and sunken areas. It's great for decor and details. I use it mostly to have pretend foundations, I've noticed. I don't really do like the sunken living room stuff in my regular builds. I think it's mostly just because in real life, this would be extremely annoying. Like having a sunken living room in here would actually be a major downside to this house. <laughs> it's interesting looking, but I think the average person probably would really not want to deal with that in real life. It's not accessible, it's a tripping hazard, it's people just prefer to have like everything in their house flat for the most part. But I put some sunken things in this house. I have a sunken living room and a sunken kitchen just because I thought it was interesting and it helped to split stuff up and I just don't really use it. So I, I kind of thought it'd be fun to try and do that in here. That's another one of those things that The Sims 4 didn't have when this house was first built because they made this obviously in 2014 or probably pre-2014 because the game actually came out in 2014. So this house, it, it missed out on a lot of those new features. <laughs> so I was giving him a chance to try it out. But yeah, the living room was definitely a struggle for me. I, I spent probably the most time trying to figure out what rug and what couch and how to lay it out and like what angle it should be on and how I can fit in the orange color scheme because the rug is so yellow. So it's just kind of hard for me to get this one started. But once it came together, it all sort of started working. These Sims have a giant TV as well. <laughs> I keep using that really expensive career unlockable base game TV. It's like the biggest flat screen TV in the whole game. That's not true. There's bigger ones. There's like the movie screens from Movie Hangout, but this is the biggest normal looking TV that isn't like weirdly curved or anything. And so I keep using it everywhere. It's actually really good too. If you play with it, it gets your Sims fun up almost instantly because it's like a very high quality, also very expensive TV. It's like 8,500 simoleons or something. <laughs> but if you use it, it's really great for gameplay. I'm really bad with taking care of my Sims fun need because most of the time when I play The Sims, I'm like really grinding for skills or for like job stuff and so I'm always trying to like progress with my sims lives and for that reason their fun is always super low because I have them work hard all day at school or work and then just come home and work on skills and they're always suffering so it's nice to have a nice tv like that because it helps to get their fun back up quickly it's also nice to have a partner because when they can woohoo that that kind of fixes it really fast too in fact it fixes it even faster but none of these sims are dating anyone at least as far as we know I'd honestly kind of ship any of them together it would be kind of fun if there was like a little storyline of, of some of them flirting but I don't know anything about new girl so I don't I wouldn't know like which of these people is meant to be which person in the new girl cast and I also wouldn't know like who in new girl dates each other I can only assume that someone from new girl dates someone else it's actually embarrassing talking about this I have a lot of or I should say I have very little knowledge of a lot of pop culture things I, I haven't seen a lot of TV shows and movies I, I mean I have but the kind of TV shows that I like to watch are like you know Love Island and, and like Bake competition. <laughs> I watch a lot of reality TV um, and not a lot of like actual TV so and more so than that I watch a lot of YouTube. <laughs> I mostly exclusively watch YouTube which I think makes sense and honestly a lot of you probably do too right? I mean you're watching this so oh my goodness we have a guest. Sunny please let me just show them to you. Are you gonna look at the screen? Okay well this is my kitten. She's
she's tangled in my headphone cord, sorry. She's come in here to say hello. I actually have a massive cat life update for you all. So as many of you probably know, I found some kittens in a sewer a couple months ago. I was taking care of them and their mom, and then they got to be about 15 weeks old, and we had the mom and one of the babies go to my parents' house, and then I kept two of the babies. So now I have three cats. Well, basically, <laughs> the life update is that my cat, Snap, has been doing a lot better with the kittens. This has been a very long, slow introduction process between them. It's, it's very normal. A lot of cats are very territorial. They don't like having other cats in their space, even if they're babies. The babies are also very curious, and Snap, like, doesn't want to be near them, which I get. I get it. I mean, they're sewer cats. If I was her, I wouldn't want them in the house either. <laughs> but we have had a massive breakthrough in the past couple of days. So before, there was a lot of, like, slow introductions. I mean slow, like, scent swapping, like, blanket swapping, stuff like that. And then you kind of work your way up to them seeing each other face to face, and now we've been hanging out face to face, like, pretty much all the time. The only thing is they still can't go into my bedroom because I want Snap to have a safe space where the kittens can't go. But the massive update and big progress is that Snap will sleep on the couch and the kittens will sleep on the couch while we're out there and it's pretty much fine. She still gets upset if they approach her or like get too close to her and sometimes if they look at her wrong she gets upset too. But the kittens aren't scared of her. They're kind of just like, okay, what's your problem, grouchy? And she's more like, okay, stay a safe distance away. But there's a lot of tolerating happening which is really good. Really, really good. We can sometimes go a whole day with like maybe only hissing once or twice and it's just Snap that hisses. Like they don't hiss back at her. He's behind me by the way. Oh my god, he started chasing his tail. Sorry, they weren't in here and then they saw the door was open and then they came in here now there's gonna be a lot of noise so I apologize. I always like to use these speed builds as sort of a, sort of a place for some life updates. You know, it's kind of podcasty so I may as well just throw that in there while we're talking. But right now we're working mostly on the exterior again. I'm kind of working on figuring out the landscaping and how the layout is gonna be, which was also kind of difficult for me, because, I don't know, the, the landscaping on this house, I wanted it to be very orange, kind of as like an accent color, but I was struggling with what kind of orange to use, and like what kind of details to have, and how many plants to have, because this is in the desert, even if there's grass, it's still like very deserty out around it. So I wanted it to blend in and seem realistic, so I, I just kind of struggled with that part of it, but I think I managed to make it work. I actually used these romantic garden stuff pack flowers that I never used to use, and then a few months ago, for my legacy challenge, I saw they had a really nice pink swatch, and I realized I actually kind of like them, and so I started using them again. I mean, well, not again. I actually never used them until this. This is a sized up version that I've got placed down right now. The default version, some of the swatches look kind of alien to me. They, they're like weirdly blue. The stems are weirdly blue, so I don't use it very often. These ones are fine. This swatch is fine. It's just, it's got some other pretty bad swatches that are the problem. <laughs> and then finally, last thing, we're gonna move back inside of the house to do some bedroom running renovations. So this is kind of fun because we get to try harder to make the rooms fit their personalities a little bit better, and the first one that I did was Zoe Patel's room. You'll probably notice this, but in the rooms I tried really hard to make their color scheme match the Sims everyday outfit, and so Zoe wears this like yellow dress with pink flowers, so in the room I tried to have it be all yellow and pink. Zoe also has the friend of the world aspiration, so she's very social, she's clumsy, a goofball, and cheerful, and she's also unemployed, which kind of complicates things a little bit because I don't have like a obvious skill to give her to work on in this room. Normally if a sim's like a musician or if they're in the athlete career I'll try and put those things like a treadmill or something in their rooms but Zoe doesn't have that. <laughs> so she's just got flowers and pink and yellow in her room. There's actually a really cute floral bed from high school years that has that pink and yellow vibe. This room is a little bit more pastel pink and Zoe has more of that like horrifying base game magenta going on. I'm trying so hard to be nice. It's just you guys you you know what I'm talking about. The base game has some horrendous swatches. It's not my fault, I'm just being honest. <laughs> it's got some really bad options, but I, I tried to give her a little bit better than that, okay? I made her room a little bit cuter. She's got a lot of the pastel pop kit going on too. I made like a fake vanity for her, so it's just a console table with a mirror on it, and then I put like a lounge chair in front of it. They can't actually use that. She won't sit there because she can't get to the chair, but it looks cute. That's kind of a little trick that I do in smaller spaces sometimes, or if I just want to have like kind of a cute thing in a room. Sometimes I'll make like a small bedroom and want to have a fake desk in it. And I don't really want it to be decorated as a real desk because there's not enough space. So I'll use just a console table and then I'll put like, you know in the base game how there's that little diary book? So there's like an open book with written words on the pages. I'll put that there on the fake desk that I've done in a similar way to this. So your sims can't even use it for home
homework anyway because there's already something on it, but it looks like they're using it. It's like a storytelling piece, you know? <laughs> it's all pretend, but it looks nice. Also, by far, I spent the most time on Zoe's room. Zoe is my favorite of the four townies though. Also, the kitten is back. I don't know, if you come on my desk, you have to be held. I don't make the rules. I'm sorry, if you just, if you jump up here, I have to get you. I don't know. Well, I mentioned earlier, by the way, that I built this on stream and I do a lot of builds like this on my Twitch channel. I do a lot of bigger builds where things like this, it take me two streams and like six hours to finish. I do that live. So if you ever want to see that kind of thing, it's kind of fun. It's definitely a little bit different than what I usually post on YouTube because there's more like chatting that happens and we get distracted more easily. But it's also interesting because you see the live process a bit more of stuff that I would normally cut out from a regular YouTube video. Like when it takes me five minutes to pick a living room rug, you can be involved in the live process. <laughs> you can make your voice heard and you can tell me that my choice is bad. So if you're ever interested in that, my name is just Lil Simsy on Twitch. I can link it down below for you. I'm, I'm there like every day. Okay, so the next room that we're doing is Gavin's room. And Gavin is a writer. He's got the best-selling author aspiration. He's also neat, a bro, and creative. And in his room, I went for a completely different vibe. All of this house is very mid-century modern, and this room is kind of more like old school. <laughs> it's got like classic wood furniture and this like old desk, but I think that's kind of realistic because in real life, if you're in a roommate situation, like the stuff that you have in your bedroom is not gonna match like the exact rest of the house, right? So I figure maybe he brought this from a different place he used to live. Maybe I'm thinking about it too much, but I like the story aspect of this. And so he's got kind of a more traditional bedroom in that sense. He does have some cool writing memorabilia. He's got like some articles on the wall that I like to pretend that he wrote. He's got a desk so he can write his books. He's got kind of a little library nook going on. Annoyingly, none of the base game Sims have like actual likes and dislikes. They didn't go back and give them favorite colors or anything like that. I wish that they had. I really wish that they had. But the base game Sims also don't even have real hot and cold weather outfits because for some reason, we never got them added. This is something else that a lot of you might not remember from like back in the day of The Sims 4, but we didn't originally have the hot and cold weather outfit categories or the swimwear one because we didn't have a pool. Those were all added later. But when we got the swimwear category, they went and gave swimsuits to all of the townies. But then when seasons came out and we got the hot and cold weather outfits, they didn't go back and give hot and cold weather outfits to any of the townies. They give them to new townies that they make now, but they never went back and like fixed Nancy Landgrab's cold weather outfit. So that's why in all of your different saves, they just have random clothes on or like an eyeball ring and five other rings and gloves and socks and sandals. <laughs> they just wear like really random pairs of things because they never got given real outfits. So they get a randomly generated one in every single fresh save. And this is something that has always bothered me so much. I don't understand why they never did that. I feel like there's almost no excuse for them to not have done it, especially because now they've proven that they can do it because they've gone back and done towny refreshes for like the Calientes and the Goths. And don't get me wrong, I'm very glad they did those refreshes, but I just want to see them do it for all of the other Sims. Like you really, really need to go back and give them an outfit. I don't feel like they have to go back and change Zoe Patel's outfits for every single one. I just want them to add a real outfit for those two missing categories. This is gonna sound bad, but like you don't even need to spend a lot of time on it. You can do it quick. I just wanna, oh my goodness, cat on the desk. <laughs> he almost knocked my phone off the desk when he jumped up. But you don't need to spend like a significant amount of time on it. If they just did a little quick, quick makeover like the rest of us have to do in every single save, that would be fine. I would prefer if they spent time on it, but like, I, I just want to have a regular outfit for all of them. <sighs> but anyway, this is me doing Mitchell's room. And Mitchell is the one that I decided I hate because he was mean to me. And so I gave Mitchell a bad bedroom. It's kind of like dirty and gross. Mitchell has the joke star aspiration. He's also outgoing, lazy, and a bro. And I don't think I ever really noticed how multiple of these Sims have the same bro trait, but whatever. And so in his room, I was kind of going for like college frat boy trying to be a comedian vibes. So it's like kind of messy. It's not very put together. There's kind of a mismatch of furniture. I just don't really get the sense that he would care about the style of his room that much. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like a lot of people don't, but um, I am, I am trying to give him a bad room on purpose because he said my house was ugly. So if you don't like it, then that's fine. I'll make it worse. It's honestly insulting to me whenever I spend like all this time building a Sims house and then one of the Sims in the house is like, mm, this is poorly decorated. And I know it's just because 
because they have some random like and dislike, but this was like a randomly generated one and it was offensive. <laughs> but anyway, he's got a computer, he's got a microphone, he's got a TV across from his bed. I actually kind of like the vibes of this room. I feel like I didn't sell it very well because I was describing it as ugly, but I think it turned out kind of nice. Nice for what I was intending for it to be at least. And then the last bedroom belongs to Jay Huntington the third, my rich trust fund baby. Jay has the bodybuilder aspiration and he's active, a bro, and non-committal. It actually is kind of annoying to me how they all have the same traits. I don't know. I get what they're trying to do and like the story they're trying to tell, like these three bros living in the house with Zoe, but I just prefer when Sims have a wider variety of traits because I think it's more interesting for gameplay. But anyway, in his room, because he's kind of sporty, I made his room a little bit more modern. It's got this like black and red color scheme. And then he's got like a fancy gaming PC because he's in the tech guru career. He's also got some athletic equipment and like some jerseys on the wall. And then that's, that's pretty much it. I feel like his room is probably the nicest out of all of them, but he's also kind of the the nicest dressed and most put together. He wears like a fancy button up shirt with a sweater tied around his neck. He, I don't know, he kind of gives me the ick a little bit, but it's rude for me to judge. So I, I'll stop, <laughs> I'll stop. He's also non-committal. He's a terrible person. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have your Sims date him. I don't know why I always did that. I literally used to always have my Sims date him. Oh my God. And the poster above his bed is like 2,200 simoleons. I've never understood that. It's this like little tiny poster, but it's so expensive. So I use it in here to kind of fit his trust fund baby vibes. And then that is the entire house finished. We're just putting some last minute touches and adding some wallpaper and stuff. And I think what I'll do now is pop back into the game and show you a quick tour of the finished product because I did cut out like the bathroom furnishings and stuff. This was a really long speed build. So I had to trim it a tiny bit because it was going to be too much. So just to catch you up to speed, we live down here in the corner of Oasis Springs and we've got kind of this weird house with this weird courtyard. It's like really annoyingly asymmetrical. It just, everything about the outside looks kind of strange. We've got a couple things in the yard outside. On the inside, we've got a small living room, a dining area, we have a bar, and this kind of horrendous yellow kitchen. I don't even know whose room this is supposed to be. This is the problem, right? Like, you look at these bedrooms, I honestly don't know who's supposed to live in any of them. This one I always assumed was Gavin's, but like, is this one Mitchell's? Is, is this one Mitchell's? I don't know. I always thought that maybe this was Zoe's, but like, just because it's pink doesn't mean it's hers. I, it's not, it's not obvious. There's no personality. So I'm going to bulldoze that. And on the gallery, I call that the Cacti Casa Reno because that's the name of the lot. It's 132,000 simoleons and it also uses like a million packs. To be honest, I can't see what packs it uses. This thing is right in front of the list of packs. She is staring at my monitor. She's kind of blocking exactly what I need to see on the screen right there, but <laughs> this is what the finished product looks like. I totally changed the roof line. I added some extra cover and stuff like this all around the side. Oh my god, she's trying to follow my mouse. <laughs> Sunny, I have to see the screen so I can do a tour. Anyway, this is what the front of the house looks like. Super different from the front, but the main layout is very similar. It still has like the interior area. I just added some extra rooms and then kind of re-roofed it completely. I really like the orange front door with the orange flowers, but if you come over here, we have the patio. Very similar to how it was before, but I added a pool, obviously. We also got a ping pong table. There's these kind of cute little grilled cheese chairs, which kind of matched, I thought. It sort of fit their vibes. In the pool, we have some floaties. There's like this pool decor. We also have some grilled cheese lounge chairs. I don't know if the color scheme matches that well because it's like a random blue, but it did have a little bit of orange which matched the rest of the house. Outside, I put a grill and a bar and I actually built this before the stuff pack came out. So I don't have a pizza oven, but honestly, this is a really good spot to put a pizza oven because these do count as outdoor grill things, by the way, they won't break in the rain. They originally had some little planter boxes. So I put some more out here for them. And then on the inside, when you first walk up, this bike matched the vibes perfectly. So I used that there. In the front, door. There's kind of like a little front entrance here. We've got like an umbrella and some shoes. They do have a little table for their keys and like a music speaker. To the left, we've got the dining room and I really liked the color scheme here. I love using the bowling stuff pack. I never use it. So I use it for the rugs and the chairs. And my favorite part is the kitchen. I love how it's kind of this galley style. And I think that the color scheme worked together perfectly. Like this flooring is really cool. And I never use that either. And it totally matches the wood on the counters. They also have a little bathroom in here. I guess it's kind of big, but we've got a big bathroom <laughs> with a fully functional space for all three Sims and laundry in here. To the right, we've got the living room, which I decorated in some kind of fun colors and patterns. This item from the basement kit is actually meant to be a picture of the Sims as children. So I used that on the wall. I thought it was kind of a cute little detail. To the right, we've got a second bathroom. This one is Zoe's room, which I added some cute decor into. We've got Mitchell's room, boo, <laughs> Gavin's room, and then also Jay's room. I like how they're all very distinct and you can 
can kind of tell whose belongs where. And then last but not least, we also have the little courtyard. And I think this turned out amazingly. The string lights from the toddler stuff pack fit perfect across the way. And then I used these big windows from the greenhouse kit. There's one little door right here on the side and then they've got a fire pit in the middle. There's like a trellis and some plants and also some more garden planters. But I just love the thought of sitting out here underneath the lights. Like this, this really worked out well spacing wise. And then that my friends is the entire finished build. I really like how it turned out. I hope that you do too. Let me know if I should go back and renovate any other base game towny houses. I actually tried to do the Spencer Ken Lewis one and gave up because it was too big and too stressful. But let me know if I should give anybody else a chance. Thanks again for watching this video. If you want to check out ThreadUp, there's a link down below. If you use code Kayla, you'll get an extra 40% off your first order, which is a massive discount on already discounted clothes. Thank you again to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. They have been huge supporters of our channel. And with that, I'm going to go and I will catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. I really think that these kittens are taking over my YouTube channel. Like they have been involved in everything. They will make sure they are involved in everything.